Welcome everyone uh, to the virtual open house for the Yale School of Art. We're going to tell you about the admission process to the school, as well as a little bit about us um, and what we offer here in the program. But first, we'll hear just some welcoming words from our Dean, Dr. Kimberly Pinder. Thanks for joining us for Open House today. My name is Kim Pinder and I'm the Dean of the School of Art. And I'm so happy that you're on this call to hear about our wonderful programs. Many of the great staff and faculty have a lot to say to you today, so I'm going to be brief so they can get started. And please ask them questions when you have a chance later on this call. There is so much to know about the School of Art and Yale. As you know, being at a world-renowned art school at a world-renowned research university gives you the best of both worlds. Having access to art faculty, critics, and visiting artists, plus being able to take courses outside of the school to enhance your knowledge and practice is, and access to the amazing collections we have here is the dual edge strength of studying here. I can't forget to mention the arts available to you in the city of New Haven as well, such as the mural behind me. And of course, all of the access that you have to the arts in New York City, that's just a train ride away. Now I'm just going to mention a little bit about the history of the school. It is 153 years old and has always been a trailblazer. It was the first school at Yale to admit women and it, currently it is the most diverse professional school at Yale. We have had a stellar list of important artists come through the Yale School of Art, everyone from Ava Hesse to Kehinde Wiley. Please enjoy the program today, and I hope to meet some of you next year. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dean Pinder. So um, we will reference back to some of the things that Kim mentioned throughout the presentation, but. Uh, our programs of graduate study here at Yale um, within the School of Art are graphic design, painting and printmaking, photography, and sculpture. And uh, another note on uh, who we educate here at the school, we are an MFA program. However, Yale School of Art and Architect, the Yale School of Art and the School of Architecture are the two out of our 14 professional schools here at the university that also um, do all of the teaching and educating of Yale College students, so students in the undergraduate programs within our areas. So our faculty teach both graduate and undergraduate students. So students who end up coming to Yale to pursue their MFA um, have the benefit of doing so within you know, as Kim said, a world-renowned research university. Um, Yale is was founded in 1701. Uh, we've been here in New Haven. Since then, we have uh, a 375-acre campus. For those of you who've never been to Connecticut or New Haven, this is an aerial view of the campus. You can see the Long Island Sound in the back there. And we're just, uh, you know, two hours or a little under two hours by train from New York City. And, um, we the university has you know enrolls many many students we have over 6000 graduate students studying across um, the graduate and professional schools of which we are one uh, there are about 5500 uh, plus undergraduate students and over 3000 um international scholars, residents, and postdocs as well here. Um, this is you know, just uh, the, the look of our campus. We wanted to kind of zoom out from, from the School of Art. Uh, we will mostly be talking about the School of Art today, but to be able to contextualize where we are within the greater university. Um, so moving out, just, just to pop outward back again uh, from the school, we have incredible museums and collections here. The Yale University Art Gallery is just down the street from our three buildings of our campus. Um, there are you know, collections dating back hundreds of years, incredible manuscripts. Um, we have a film archive, uh, library, like every school or genre um, has, dedicated space within the library or its own library. There's a, the Haas Family Arts Library just across the street from us in the School of Architecture building. Um, and 
you know, if you if you come to Yale either for a tour or just being in New Haven or um, ultimately to enroll, you'll this is the kind of look and feel of the campus, this beautiful old um, Ivy League institution with lots of history around it. And the School of Art occupies four buildings um, kind of on the edge of campus a little bit. The museums and collections I mentioned are plentiful, but uh, I would say the ones that our students tend to access the most are the, uh, or well, the Beinecke is incredible. This is the Rare Books and Manuscripts Archive, which is a cube, which is a marble cube. I, I showed it in the video a little bit before, and it has this refrigerated or like temperature controlled um, block of all these very, very old texts and, and manuscripts and, and archives that can be studied and researched. Um, this is the Haas Library that I mentioned, which is fully dedicated to arts and architecture texts as well. Fun fact, um, our, we, we also dark, document an archive um, thesis work from our students here, which can later be researched as well by scholars and art students and, and other people coming through. The UAG is the Yale University Art Gallery, um, which is our museum that's that's within the university um, that has many curators and many different departments. There's actually an incredible um, show right now, a Michelin Thomas show that's up um, on the fourth floor and the YCB, which is the Yale Center for British Art, uh, just to name a few. And then we also enjoy relationships with several cross-disciplinary labs at the university, like the CCAM, which is the Center for Collaborative Arts and Media, which is really a university hub for um, you know, digital exploration and such uh, multidisciplinary, as well as the Center for Engineering and Innovation, Innovation Design, which we actually have a fellowship for a graduating student to work there um, in places like the Yale Farm, um, and the list really goes on. These are some students at the farm after harvesting um, some various uh, flowers and wheat, uh, wheat and flowers to make dye actually, and then who made a meal together. So, but back at the campus, um, like I mentioned, we have four buildings. This is our main building uh, called Green Hall. In this area, we have our administrative offices as well as uh, facilities for photography, labs, um, some studio spaces. This is a photography student studio here. Um, first year photo students share a studio with one other person, second year students work in their own. And um, in addition to that, we have the graphic design program, which is called the Atrium. Graphic designers work in these kind of cubicle desk spaces all along the perimeter of this space, which we call the Atrium. This is outside the building. Here are some dark rooms. Um, just wanted to, since we, we can't have you on the campus today, moving everyone through the spaces, just be able to show you um, a bit of the look and feel of, of the school. And then also within Green Hall is our gallery. We have a three floor gallery, which is dedicated to student exhibition. And this is where our MFAs mount their thesis show. Um, we also have group shows for both first and second year cohorts. And there's also several undergraduate shows that happen in the gallery space as well. So it's really um, considered you know, a learning space and a classroom and, um, we do open our shows to the public when we have openings. So maybe some of you have seen some, some shows there. Also wanna mention we have a open studios event in April of every year. And that's when we really open the doors and, and, and allow anyone to come in and see what our students are making and doing and uh, meet them and just have a community event. So we, we're we're a very small place. This is a, sorry, I just wanna pause for a second. This is a sculpture studio. So this is a student in the second year, this is their space. We're now over in Edgewood, um, which is the third, uh, well, another one of our buildings. This is where we have, um, you know, the laser cutter, the wood and the metal shop is in this building. We also, um, have some classrooms. We have a video production facility downstairs uh, and also some photography MFA studios are located in Edgewood as well. 
Um, as I've just mentioned in the shop, the fab shop, it, we, we support both wood and metal. We do not have ceramics, um, or we don't have like a, like a school of art facility to make ceramic work or kilns, but, um, there are some of those facilities around the university and some of the undergraduate residential colleges. And so this is a view of the Edgewood complex, uh, which is sculpture studios, as I just mentioned, fab shop, photo studios, and some classrooms. Um, we also have a few offices in there. And then 32 Edgewood, which is a gallery, it's really a, um, a space that can encompass uh, critiques and um, seminars, classes. It's, it's sort of a white cube gallery that we use for a multitude of different purposes. 353 Crown Street is our building that houses all of the painting student studios. Um, and these are, uh, there's, there's 40 students in that program. So um, in addition to individual painting student studios, we also have uh, the print shop in here as well, which supports, you know, etching, relief printing, um, intaglio, and um, like different processes, collagraph, I think I mentioned screen, um, and, and litho. Um, Within within the, the buildings that comprise the School of Art campus, um, you know, of course, part of why we're showing you all this is we, we are part of a very, very large university. And so there's many other um, different facilities and gathering places uh, that we really encourage our students to get, you know, get out into the community and experience. Um, but it, I, a lot of our program is very structured. There's a lot of requirements. So it's very easy to sort of like hunker down in the studio and between classes and that and studio visit meetings stay within the School of Art. But we're always really trying to emphasize how what an opportunity is to be in such an expansive university and go out and meet people while you're here. Um, this is the pit. This is um, the main kind of critique space for this for the painting program. And all of the programs have their own dedicated dedicated one for that. Um, so our MFA academic requirements, uh, they vary by program. And in the individual program breakouts, you'll hear from our faculty about that. They'll talk in depth um, about their individual um, curriculum. But in total, 60 units are required to complete the MFA. And uh, between 40 and 42 uh, of those credits are within the area of study or within the school. There's 15 to 18 additional elective credits you take that can really be in any area or discipline, a minimum of one course or three credits uh, of that is required outside of the School of Art. That used to be six or two classes that was just changed. And uh, again, I'm gonna let the program directors talk to their specific pedagogy and approach. Um, a couple of things I do like to point out though that are universal for any student studying in our MFA program are critical and professional practices, which is a first year course. We have a number of different thematic sections that students can um, kind of qualify their interest in and then are placed. But this is um, a way from the very first semester uh, for the MFA students in the two year program to really establish uh, kind of a a shared language around, you know, history and theory, and also all of these um, resources and approaches to professional practices. So that's something we've we've more recently infused into that curriculum as well. And we also another um, curricular uh, feature that's new for us. Uh, we're in our second year of interdepartmental day programming. So Yale School of Art. Um, you know, we're, we're 153 years old. Uh, we have kind of very specific histories. The programs have for many years were quite siloed. And so uh, with a lot of new leadership across the school, we're really doing what we can to facilitate interdepartmental engagement among students. And this was very responsive to what students were saying they wanted. So every Wednesday we have, um, we have, uh, like programs for all school, whether it's crits, where you can join a group crit where you're having a critique from faculty from other disciplines and other students, or um, workshops. Today, we had 
um, a group called the Trans Equity Council who was here doing a presentation for two hours that involved, um, you know, some group interaction work as well. So we're 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 having an active schedule there on Wednesdays, and it is extracurricular. You can engage if you want or not. Um, that's up to you. Um, I do want to point out uh, really quickly before we move on to admission and financial aid. Every year when we prepare for this event. Um, my office works with student graphic designers to really um, to to design the identity of the event and the whole look and feel of the way we're presenting ourselves to you. And I just love this year's uh, work. Dedalus and Jenny, um, who are both second year students in the MFA design program, uh, had cre have created this identity, which pulls different letter forms that were all entirely designed by students in the MFA program. And then throughout the body of the, of the um, presentation, you'll see three main typefaces. And those also um, came out of courses taught by faculty, Julian Bittner and Nina Stossinger and Tobias Freer Jones. So just want to give a little plug to them and their process. And I just love the way that they've really um, used this presentation design as an opportunity to further showcase what our students make and do. And here's a perfect example of that. It's just beautiful, in my opinion. So um, we're going to just quickly go through our admission guidelines um, and financial aid process. So before I start this, I usually just like to point out that, well, first of all, all of our admission requirements and guidelines are on our website, art.yale.edu. You can always reference them. Um, additionally, within Slate, which is our application pro, uh, program or you know, website or interface, um, you can find all the instructions there as well. Many of these are guidelines, particularly when it comes to the way you present your portfolio. And we don't do portfolio reviews here. We don't give portfolio advisement. And part of that is that um, we we believe strongly that making the decision for your edit is very much part of you showing us your work and your practice. Okay, so if you have very specific questions about how to show your work, really we just say trust yourself and make the best judgment because you are the creator of your work and you know how best it should be viewed. Uh, by a committee to get the, the full effect. Um, so our website to apply is apply.art.yale.edu. You'll create an account using an email that you check regularly, please, because that's where we're going to send all of your admission notifications. Uh, so you just want to be able to make sure you're, that's really accessible to you. Our application form is pretty straightforward. I think there's about seven pages of just you know, demographic um, questions and, and information you'll fill out, the history of your academic journey, um, as well as uh, filling out your recommender form. So you are, or applicants are asked to submit three letters of recommendation. We loosely recommend that these are educators or people you've worked with within a school context, but it's, it's not you can go outside of that. I mean, certainly if you have um, someone that you've say like worked for an artist or you're connected to someone else who is in the art or design world who can kind of speak to your potential there or how you are as a community member, you can certainly um, choose those people as your recommenders. The application fee to apply is $100. Unfortunately, because we are in need blind admission process and I'll touch on what that means shortly. Uh, we do not have fee waivers. We do waive fees for certain, uh, from students coming from certain nations that have um, particularly low exchange rates. So you can view that list on our website. In addition to the portfolio, which I'll elaborate on a little bit more in the next two slides, we also ask for a one page statement. Please make this one page, 500 word max. This is um, it's an exercise in efficiency for and brevity in terms of just really zeroing in on the important parts for you about, you know, who you are, your lived experience, your work, um, and, and really what your work is doing or what you're exploring within your practice. As you probably know, 
Uh, there was a major change in judgment this summer with the Supreme Court about um, it, schools and institutions not able to factor in uh, race and ethnicity data into admission decisions going forward. This will be our first year under this new law, but we've always been a dynamic place which builds cohorts that represent a range of voices, and we will always continue to do that. Um, and we do encourage you to, you know, absolutely, you can talk about your lived experience, how you connect to your work um, in your statement. That's really your place to address us as a committee. Uh, resume or CV, really up to you. Um, and then as well, if you are a non-native English speaker who has, if you haven't attended a school that has an English speaking curriculum, you do also have to submit a TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo score. If you're not sure about that, just um, if you qualify for an exemption or not, email us um, if, if, if our guidelines aren't clear enough for you. Um, so the portfolio, 16 images is what the painting program limits the application to. All three other programs allow for up to 20 images of work to be uploaded. Um, we really just advise that your portfolio is a demonstration of the current direction in your practice, the ideas you're working with, and really what you're really ex what you're excited about right now. Um, we do recommend that that work be recent. And I say within the last 12 months, we get a lot of really specific questions at this. If you have some work that falls outside of that time frame, you can include it, you know, sparingly. I mean, I wouldn't make the whole portfolio years old. But what it is not an exercise in is like showing a chronology, like here's where I started and here's where I am now. It's very much about putting your, in your opinion, your best foot forward, your most indicative foot forward in terms of what you hope to expand on when you ultimately get into and pursue your degree in a graduate program. Um, new for this year, we would like for you to notate in the in the image notes section if you are using AI uh, within the creation of your work. Um, and then for work that is either 3D or you know paintings or work that is um, that has sort of a physical presence as an as an object or as something that sort of lives in space or lives on the wall, we definitely really want to see all of that. So, uh, for instance, a painting, don't take a picture of it and then crop the image down so that just the painting is. We want to see the edges of the painting. We'd love to see how the sculpture lives in space or how it should be viewed. If the sculpture is kinetic or if you have a book that you want to show us, you know, you can always make a video file of, of uh, that demonstrates how that piece uh, kind of moves or or how it's sequenced, that's an option as well. We ask that you avoid composite images, composite images. And what that is, is when you say, oh, okay, hmm, there's 20 images, but I wanna show a hundred or 120. So I'm gonna jam six images into every you know, slide I, I submit. I'm gonna show them more work. That is not helpful to us. We it's really difficult to see the work. We want to rate everyone. We want we want to take every applicant into consideration on, you know, generally the same amount of work. So please, um, if you want to show, for instance, like two images or two different views of a piece, you can submit those side by side. But I really would not put more than two images uh, in a couple of 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 frames, and that would be specifically, um, you know, if you have a, a triptych or a diptych, that's another, but you take what I'm saying, don't, please don't cram each, each image with way too much stuff because it just makes it much more difficult for us to review it. Um, time-based work should be grouped last, uh, with the way that we, we review everything. That's just the best flow and video files shouldn't exceed one minute of running time. We also ask that you not send like sizzle reels or sort of trailer type work. If you have a long video work, simply select like a minute of running time that you think best demonstrates uh, that piece. Okay, and then take time to prepare. We uh, The application has been open since October 4th. We recommend that you log in, create an account, get familiar with the system, start uploading images, start writing your statement, absolutely start requesting letters if you have not already. Our deadline is 
January 10th. And and, uh, you know, we're getting ready to enter into the holiday season. So people get busy. It's the end of the semester, especially if you're reaching out to educators, give them ample time. Uh, although our deadline does happen on January 10th, we keep the letter of recommendation portal open. Uh, it doesn't ever close, but we can only guarantee that your letters will be viewed by the committee. If they're here on time, we do start you know, we start reviewing right away. So last uh, little little tip is that uh, we recommend that you be prepared, that our system may become overburdened, especially in the final hours of submission. We've heard from people who, you know, they're trying to upload their portfolio at 11.45, the night that it's due, and, you know, they're having technical difficulties, but technical difficulties don't mean, you know, not preparing yourself and um, kind of having an issue where, you, you can't upload things fast enough. So those are the kinds of things, uploading your images and videos and putting all your materials into the application, better off doing it early. So for the cycle, we plan to admit, um, you know, we're, we're gonna admit seven students in the prelim uh, track of the design program and 10 MFAs. We'll be admitting 20 students to painting, 10 to photography, and 10 to sculpture. We are an unusual admission process in that we only admit the number of students that we have room for. And then if someone declines our offer, we go to the wait list. The deadline, as I mentioned, is January 10th. Uh, notice of preliminary selections happens in early February. What that means is we let you know um, if we're saying regrets, thank you very much for applying, um, but you were not selected, or we would love to interview you and we give a couple weeks notice for that. So interview finalists are notified in early March after their interview of the outcome of our final admission decisions. If you're interested in applying for more than one area of study, you can, but unfortunately we ask that you submit all your material. Like you make a whole separate application. You submit the app, you know, you upload everything for each application and, you know, addressing each program within your statement is advised as well. We invite, approximately 50 to 20% of our interview pool to interview with our admission committee. And our admission committee is um, is our faculty. You know, they, they're really making the decisions about who they want to work with. And uh, the average admit rate, it really changes every year based on the number of applications we get. But uh, this past year it was about 4%. But that's not to frighten you. <laughs> we, we we really encourage everyone who's interested in Yale to follow through with an application. We see so many people start applications and never follow through by submitting them. And I always wonder, like, who could be out there? Uh, many, I, I assure you that many people who never apply would have been amazing fit for the program and, and could have gotten in. Uh, the interviews will take place this year via Zoom. It's just the best way for us to have the interview process accessible to the most amount of people, especially as our cohorts uh, continue to become more and more global. And um, so we will we will be doing that online or, you know, if you're in a country that doesn't support Zoom, we'll find a way to video conference with you. We also create a wait list. And that way, if anyone declines the offer, we go to the wait list and I'll stay in communication with you. Uh, if you're in that case, we we do sometimes see that students or applicants apply to us more than one time before they're admitted. That's normal. And uh, if if you're if you're really devoted to coming here, it's no shame in that game of applying again. We don't practice deferment. So unfortunately, if you are offered admission and you decide not to take it that year, you would be reapplying. So I, I'm over schedule here, so I'm just going to do this part really quickly, but you can, as, as with everything I'm sharing here, you can access this information on our website whenever you want. Um, we are a private institution. The tuition is expensive, uh, and so is the cost of living. So our total cost uh, for the program is 70, around 74,000, I believe. I'm, I have a pop-up that's blocking that part of the, of the presentation. Um, but to, to be considered for financial aid, uh, we have everyone fill out a form called the CSS profile. That's gonna be for both domestic and international applicants. Um, domestic students uh, would fill out the FAFSA, um, as well as submit tax returns, but uh, that's on the next slide. I'm getting ahead of myself. 
I will point out that Yale does have a somewhat of a um, unique process of awarding aid. We are very much need-based need, need -based financial aid. And uh, for that calculation, our formula does take into account not only your income and assets, but that of your family. So parental information is requested uh, on the application for the CSS profile. And there are no waivers currently for age, marital status, dependency, or sadly, a parental willingness to contribute. If you have questions about this or concerns, you can contact Nicole Archer, who is our director of financial aid, who's not able to be with us today. However, Nicole works for art and architecture schools. So therefore she is not usually able to respond to individual requests from applicants until they're at the finalist stage. So once you're invited for the interview, um, she would be in contact with you. So we appreciate your patience and contacting her. Um, so more requirements and deadlines. U.S. applicants, as I mentioned, also do FAFSA in addition to CSS. We require prior prior year tax documentation. So if you haven't done your 2022 taxes yet, for whatever reason, do them now. You're going to need that. You cannot file for financial aid without it as a domestic student, nor can you as an international without a translated income statement that's current. Submit all your materials by March 1. You will not know if you're admitted yet. You'll know if you have an interview by March 1, but you will not know if you're admitted yet. So if you're seeking aid, please fill that out. As mentioned earlier, we are need blind admission. This means that we don't take your need into account at all when making admission decisions. We have no view of your financial aid paperwork. We don't even pull it down from um, FAFSA or CSS until we know, you know, who's in. So um, our cal our scholarship is calculated solely by the financial aid office's need calculation. We do not have, we don't further distinguish admits by merit scholarship. So it's important to know that. Um, okay, let's see. Need is met with a combination of scholarship loans, work study, and for instance, for some who who have partial need or no need student and or parent contribution. Just to put this in context, uh, the first year scholarship maximum is full tuition. So if you're the highest need student, you can be awarded a scholarship that pays for your tuition, but your living expenses would be um, something you'd need to cover either through a loan or through your own uh, way of, of financing that. Our average scholarship does vary annually, but we have currently this year over 83%, I think, of students are on some kind of financial aid. Okay, so we've already gone over the admission deadline. Financial aid deadline is March 1. Um, please send us your questions, art.admission at yale.edu. Uh, Sarah Cronquist, who's our senior admin, who's on the call right now, she answers the email. Um, I also want to give a shout out to our um, communications team, Sarah and Lindsay, who are kind of running this show for us. We are so grateful to you for making this possible. And uh, one final note about reaching out uh, is that our admission team, which is basically Sarah and I, um, we are here to answer all your questions. We do our best to put all the information on the website. And we ask that you please respect the time um, of our faculty and students. It's very tempting, I think, to reach out to people. We do list our students' names on the website and our faculty. It's tempting to reach out to them and ask them questions about applying. But we are the experts in the process and we are here to, you know, communicate with you and get you the answers that you need. So thank you for that in advance. Um, they're busy, they're running the program or trying to get their MFA. Um, so thank you for that. And Thank you for coming to the open house. Thank you so much.